Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, here we go. Four horsemen status. The originals. All it took 65 episodes. Well, here we go. Same as it ever was. It's like a night out in Providence, fellas. And it is Saturday night. So let's get this uh rolling with uh five dollar beers. The old <laughs> strand. <laughs> Are we at the Foxy or are we at Lupus? <laughs> <laughs> These stories will never end. And they just get better as the years go on, I must say. Um, so, that being said, let's uh, pay a little homage. We got no Bradford this week. He's in Florida. Baseball tournament with the boy. Uh, Chris on hiatus from... Uh, I think uh, vacation hangover with the family, so it's all good. We'll, they'll be back soon. Uh, Bradford sent in his tinfoil hat. We'll have that later on in the show. But first, Edwin, how do we do? What do we usually do first? Well, we're go we're doing the mail. All do right, an email. Time for Can you dig it? Time time for some reach into the bag. And ease the seat back. The old, uh, the old uh, goonguard.com bag. You know, it's right here. Check it out. You know, I mean, great mouthpieces, you know, two to the bag, discount code in 1973. I mean, check them out. Great mouthpieces. All right. Well, so here we go. Uh, this is uh, this is from Gail from uh, from Mississippi. Uh, hello, 1973 podcast. Want to know what your thoughts are on this Ozampic weight loss craze. Someone on the cast has a sports background. I believe hearing this uh, Gail, she's 56 and she's from Mississippi. So, anybody else want to take a little stab, a little stabby stab at it first, or were... well, no pun intended with the stab, right? Because it is an injection. Uh, oh, there, I, there we go. When this email came in, I was like, "Well, it's it's something different. It's a little something different to talk about. Maybe a controversial subject." Uh, Brad's not on the podcast this week. He was all over this, um, but uh, I I really would like Ed's take on this from a physical education background uh it's like the new craze it's like the new weight loss craze what do you think ed well first of all ozampic is made for people with diabetes and that's that's it's to regulate blood sugar first and foremost that's what it's really intended for now if you're using it for weight loss i mean i will say you know uh you may want to put down your fork and knife and check out to see what you have on your plate um now this is just basic you know, knowledge that you can find it in any exercise science book or anything like that. If you want to lose weight, you should eat four to six protein, carbohydrate, fat meals a day. And the, the macro ratio should be about 40% carbs, 30% protein, and 30% fat. And the thing is, it's like you have to move and you shouldn't be eating processed food. So that's that, that right there in itself, um, you know, for, for most normal people, your uh, BSM, which is your basal metabolic rate, um, or BMR, sorry. And, you know, like for myself, is 1850. That is just to keep all your systems on in your body, like where you can actually, like, get up and move around and, like, have proper nerve function and actually have proper brain function. So the thing about it is, is that, um, you know, if you want to lose weight, Ozampic is probably not the best thing to do. Um, because I looked at some of the research and science behind it. And the thing about it was, is that you're only losing about a pound a week. Well, funny story. If you actually go to the gym, uh, increase your water, uh, for women, women should drink two liters of water a day. That does not include like Cokes or diet Cokes or anything like that, which, you know, those aren't so healthy for you. Um, men should drink three liters of water a day to be properly hydrated. Um, so, you know, check your diet. Um, and one of the best ways to actually lose weight is to actually log your food and a free app called my fitness pal. You can punch it in right there and you'll, you'll have the same results. Um, if you really want to kind of like heal your gut, check out the whole 30 and actually do the whole 30 where you're not eating any processed food for 30 days. You'll probably have the same type of results and none of the side effects. And if somebody wanted to, uh, get in touch with you on social media about uh, questions about things like that. How can they reach you? Sure. They can hit me up on Facebook. They can hit me up in the DM up on Facebook. 
and know, uh, it's Ed Sylvester. I mean, it, there's only a few of us out there. <laughs> Tom, uh, any thoughts on the Ozampic craze? It's just, it's to me, it's a quick fix. And if you don't change, like Ed said, if you don't change your eating habits and you do this, it, chances are you're more than likely just going to put the weight back on at some point and some point soon. It's like even when you have to, when you do the guy gastric ba uh, bypass surgery, they don't just do the surgery. You have to go and meet with a psychologist for I think three months, and they have they have to actually okay it and make sure you're in the right frame of mind and make sure it's because even with that you can put the weight right on if you don't change your thinking and your mindset. So it's I, it's all in your mindset. You you have to get it in your head and you have to stick with it. Uh, Ryan. Uh... Weight loss crazes. What do you think? What happened to the uh, old fashioned stick your finger down your throat? <laughs> I, I, I know we're born in 1973, and you, know, you, you can get it done more than one way. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Whatever. I think I'd rather, uh, I'd rather be a fat fuck than uh, take a needle every day. <laughs> this is true. Either way, you're, <laughs> I, I think if you have poor eating habits, you're going to uh, eventually, you know, have to. You know, if you become diabetic or, or something like that. And uh, my grandmother was always heavy. And when she got older, she eventually got a diabetes. And it was uh, the first time I ever knew anybody that had it. And it was crazy to see, uh, you know, how uh, an older person in their late 60s all of a sudden, you know, became diabetic. So, you know, it's it's one of those things. I'm, a great question. Um, I wish we had the full crew here to uh, address it even more. But Ed hit the nail on the head usually. Uh, with uh, all the uh, weight loss stuff and the fitness stuff. So uh, great question. If we had Dennis on the show too, I'd like Dennis's uh, take on that uh, to see what he had to say. So let's move on away from the email uh, and let's talk. One of the things we've been talking about um, all season, season finale, Dark Side of the Ring. We were talking about it before we went on the air. Um, I had mentioned it. There's a uh, uh, kind of, a yin to the yang with the dark side. Uh, it's more like a biography episode than a dark side. Um, I thought it wasn't robust enough. Uh, Tom, you want to uh, add to it well, some of the things we were talking about? Well, it's just, to me, I think they could have gone, they could have gone in a lot more in depth with it and they could have made it actually, seeing as it was the uh, season finale, they could have done a two-parter. And uh, got gone a little bit more in depth with it, and um, it it got through a lot of stuff. I mean, I thought the the most interesting stuff to me was when uh, they talked about the Briscoes and Arn with their deal. I mean, Oli, and uh, they did the blood thing to make their little <laughs> uh, make their deal, and then in the end, Oli was really the one that broke the pack first. So, but I mean. I think they could have, and then at the end, they kind of skirted through where they just kind of rushed through with like right at the very end talking about what's going on right now with McMahon and his downfall. I think they could have gone into more into that, but. Uh, Ryan, take on the uh, last episode of Dark Side. Yeah, you know, I kind of I kind of feel the same as like what Tom just said. Uh, I, I find like personally when I'm watching them, maybe it's just from being like a wrestling fan for so long. A lot of times, I, I feel like the stuff that they're talking about, like I already know it. So it, it, those are the ones that kind of really don't appeal to me, because like, they're not really blown away by what they're, what they're telling you. Like Maybe somebody that didn't know anything about it might be like, oh, shit, that's, that was like a big part of like McMahon's plan like in the early days and like like that part of it. But I, uh, it probably wasn't one of my favorite ones. It was I thought it was just decent. But it's uh, it just kind of lets you know, like, Vinny had a plan, and uh, yeah, you know, as much as a lot of people don't like him, he, he saw it through, and he, he took he took over the world with it. And thoughts on that, Doc Side? I I got a question for everybody before we move on from Doc Side before we end. But go ahead, Ed. Thoughts on the episode? Well, I, I thought it was good. I mean, I'm going to agree with Ryan. You know, it's it, we already kind of already knew all the things that Vince has done. I mean, first and foremost, I mean, Vince didn't become a billionaire by not having a plan. I mean, he, you know, I mean, granted, you know, dad had money, but I mean, you know, I mean, Vince really took wrestling, you know, worldwide. I mean, think about it. I mean, the rock and wrestling connection, I mean, with in Madison Square Garden with Cindy Lauper and that whole thing with Hogan and, you know, 
Mr. T and everything like that. I mean, that was just incredible. And to see all this stuff, you know, like with Ole, I mean, I never knew, you know, Ole was, I, I mean, I didn't, I never knew he owned a sawmill, you know? And I mean, he pretty much was in wrestling just kind of like, you know, this was his other business and he, he tried to treat it like a regular business. Um, and the stuff that Vince did over the years, I mean, it's not a surprise. I mean, look what he did for Snooker. I mean, Snooker allegedly murdered somebody and Vince made it go away. You know, like, I mean, I mean, the federal government went after Vince and essentially Vince pretty much kind of skated on that, too. You know, he was kind of like the Teflon Don. So, you know, the, this now in the era of PC and everything like that, he's finally paying the piper. You know, the man's, what, 82, 83 years old. And, you know, like he's lived his life and now you're going to punish him, punish him for stuff that he did 20, 30 years ago. I'm not saying it makes it right by any means of the imagination, but. Bottom line is, is that, you know, I, I wasn't really shocked about anything. And it really was kind of just like you said, just kind of more of a kind of like an informational kind of dark side of the room than anything else. I, th I think it's tough for when we have Chris and Brad on who are uh, the younger guys on the podcast to really grasp what wrestling was like back then. Uh, you see it in it. You know, you go back and you watch it. And it doesn't have the same effect that it did. Like like for me. I remember the Black Saturday. I remember that. I remember watching it and being having a what the hell moment what, because there was no other than the wrestling magazines. You had no um, insight into anything because it was so kayfabe. I mean, when they say kayfabe, it was total kayfabe. Uh, you didn't want to approach those guys if you saw them they were like larger than life not just like hogan but even like when you saw big john stud and these other guys that weren't known for being loud personalities that i remember the first time i saw andre i told him i think on the podcast i was at the boston garden and we were sitting right on the aisle where they came out from the locker room and i remember looking up and, and seeing this guy and i was probably i don't know six seven years old and and i couldn't believe how big this person was and that was always the allure to wrestling. I didn't ever live through Beatlemania or any of that stuff, but wrestling back then had this allure to it that it doesn't have now. They're so, you know, if you got money, you can go to conventions and things like that and see these guys. We didn't have any of that. We, you just had the chance to go once a month to whatever arena they came to and see whatever feud was going on. And you didn't know that from town to town they were having that same match just to work towards something for a blow-off at the end. You just saw that little bit every week that they fed you, and you were, like, hooked for the next week. And it wasn't three-hour episodes. It was, like, uh, the only one that was two hours was the 605 show. But everything was an hour, and it was, like, rushed. You know, it was squash matches, and we're, hey, we're coming to the Civic Center. Hey, we're coming to Boston Garden. Hey, we're, and it was like you wanted to go because you wanted to see the Snook of Morocco thing. You wanted to see Hogan in the Sheik. You wanted to see Sergeant Slaughter in the Sheik, right? and all that stuff. So, people that didn't live through that never were hooked into that wrestling. And I think that's the the chase for me is always getting back to that how it was as a kid, and that that you know the grabbing you and bringing you in. So that's always been what i've missed about the wrestling and i hope that it comes back but it seems to be booming bigger than it ever has been now so my my question is before we move on from dark side and talk about one other thing dark side what has been your favorite dark side episode of this year thomas wow that's a good one um hmm i'll, I'll go first and okay. just to start it off while you guys think about it my personal one was sherry I thought that was the best one I was the most interested in. Um, I know probably Sandman had shock and awe and all that stuff, but the Sherry one for me was uh, had the best story with the son and, and what she sacrificed and how much as a kid she wanted to be a wrestler and probably all the stuff that was left out of the story that she probably had to do to, you know. So Sherry is, is my pick. And you got a pick? Oh, man, I'm going to go with Sam in this year. I, I mean, I, I really just – there's some things I didn't know about him. And, I mean, I if I mean, what was it, back in, what, 1997, 
98, I think, or 96, 97, when the four of us actually went um, to the uh, Waltham Armory and we saw Sandman, Taz, Sabu, I mean, uh, the franchise, um, what was his name, uh, Chris Candido. I mean, that, I mean, and Jerry then to Funk. see the documentary like behind them and the stuff that you never got to see because AEW came on at like 12 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, you know, on cable on Saturday nights. So I, I really, it was nice to see that about him. You know, I mean, again, it just kind of followed the typical script that they all follow, but I thought that was my favorite one. Tom, do you have one? Yeah. Uh, Mine would probably have to be Chris Adams because that was a wrestling. That was probably, I was probably my, I liked that more than uh, WWF when I was a kid. And WCW at the time I was watching that w, uh, WCW wasn't even on over here and where I live. So, I mean, uh, and it taught me a lot of stuff I didn't really know about him. He wasn't, he wasn't that good of a gut person. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you, I really learned a lot about him and I thought that was really good. I've liked the few that they've had about the world class. I thought Terry Gordy's was pretty good too. It was pretty sad, but. Phantom, what do you got? The one with uh, Buff. That, that was uh, super entertaining, but we kind of like what I said before, there was a lot of stuff sprinkled in there that I had no idea about, which was like, Kind of was like blowing me away, but uh, such a fan, such a crazy life. And uh, the thing that was cool about it too is like, like you said before, guy's still kicking, still alive, and he was on it to talk about it. You know, then that that makes all the difference in the world. So now you're not just off of somebody's kids talking about them, and you know, you know, you're pulling at the hot strings when somebody's passed away. People might not want to talk bad about him, or maybe go. The total opposite is like, oh, they're dead, and they're not going to call me up if I say anything bad. But it's, uh, I thought it was cool. It was funny too. So I, that, that kind of added to it. So, do you think they've exhausted all the stories that they could do? Or I mean, the the one that they did this year that was kind of the only one that I really was gravitated to, as far as like I want to learn about this person because I knew absolutely nothing about them was Chris Cole. That episode was probably the most educational for me because of being kind of a wrestling nerd with that stuff and kind of like to be a historian and put the put the territories in kind of chronological. I've never heard of them before. Yeah, I, that was the one I kind of was drawn to. But what do, what do they do next? I mean, they've done like all the, you know, like Ed brought up the Snooker story. They did that. They did, of course, the Bruce of Brody. They did Chris Benoit. They did all these ones what do I they think do they, next? i think they're trying to go like a little bit more like profile style because I, I think they got a lot of heat off of the um the plane one. Oh yeah and now i think they, they must have so many stories that these guys could be telling that's not really about a certain person it could just be like a culture or or something along those lines or just a, like wacky stories of like shit that these guys were doing back then not so much that it's like he was an alcoholic. He uh, left his wife. His kids didn't love him. And like it, it's all the same. The guys are they're all they're all on the road. Uh, if you had the if you did one about bands or anything like that, it'd probably be the same thing. Right, right. Uh, so speaking of a dark side of the ring story, hmm. let's talk Ric Flair in Florida. Ed, as a matter of fact, Thomas, thoughts on the Ric Flair story. Woo! At, <laughs> at the pizza place. Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately, it looks like a 75-year-old former wrestler still trying to live the gimmick, and it, it he just comes off as sad, and there's, supposedly there's some video of it that's supposed to be coming out, so it's, it's not going to From what I've heard, it doesn't make him look too good. I haven't seen the video yet, but it's sad. I mean, and the sad thing is, is he'd like, just came out a couple days ago and said that he had actually had a heart attack during his last match that he had. What was that? Like two years ago. And he said that he just found out recently when he went to go see his doctor that he had had a heart attack during that match. So, I mean, it's just, it's just full of sadness and hopefully, I mean, somebody can, once all this stuff comes out because he hasn't been getting any good press, hopefully he kind of wakes up a little bit, but. And you want to weigh in on a nature boy? Well, first off, it's sad. You know, I mean, 
you know, I saw the video and he's like, you know, I came in here, spent a lot of money and I'm trying to get this place over. Um, it just, it, it's, it just sounds like, you know, like he's, he's just trying to hang on and it's like, man, like, look, it's time for you to ride off into the sunset, man. Like we all love you, but you're making yourself look really bad and it's kind of sad, you know? And, um, you know, it, it's one of those things. I mean, plus, I mean, if, if I am, if I am correct, I, I mean, he was in Gainesville. And yep. in Gainesville, I mean, like the thing about it is, is like they're used to drunk people, you know, <laughs> they're just not used to a drunk 75 year old, you know, former professional wrestler that, you know, really, I mean, he's really, it, he was, he was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, but he just needs to knock it off. We all love the nature boy, but it, it's, it's tough watching the, uh, the end. Um, I think you should, for, for me, I think you should be a lot more humble than what he actually is, but. Uh, want to weigh in on that one there, Franco? Yeah, the uh, I, I guess you can't teach a uh, old, old dog new tricks, so it's uh, I think he's definitely uh, going out his way and he, he's he's lived his life that way. I, I think it's a little bit more embarrassing when you are an older gentleman like he is, as yeah, so he was probably he was probably like that that his whole life, and he's just. He does not give a fuck, <laughs> and, and and it is what it is. It's like, the, as as much as I hate to see it, I can almost kind of appreciate it. To, he's in a point of his life where it's like, the guy was on his deathbed because of alcohol abuse and and, and all that and the tough road, and he's like, what am I gonna do? Sit around my house and then just grow old? Like fuck it, just gonna like, he's going out guns blazing, and I can almost kind of appreciate it a little bit, like. Be ripped till the day you die. And then after he dies, everybody's going to forget all this shit and it's going to go back to woo and, you know, style and profile. And so do you, do you, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> the only, the, my, my takeaway from this is that this was the thing that made me laugh. So I, I watched the video and uh, so he says, <laughs> he says to the bartender or whoever the manager is that he's talking to, he says, do you want to go outside and talk about this like men? There's a guy in the restaurant. Yes, yes. There's a guy in the restaurant. I'll fight that's you. A, that's a patron that <laughs> must go there regularly. And so the, the bartender or the uh, manager says, oh, I'm not going to go outside, sir. Real polite. So one of the guys at the bar goes, I'll go outside with you right now. He goes, what did you say to me? Like trying to backpedal. And he's like, yeah, I'll go outside with you right now. He's like, what What'd you say to me? It was the funniest is, it, is there any an honor in beating up Ric Flair at 75 years old? <laughs> and then the, and then the oh, funny thing, the, the, the waitress that got the $1,000 tip from him is the one that's trying to defuse it. Like, she don't want him to get his ass kicked outside. She wants her $1,000. No, no. She, 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 tell, she tells him, write down $1,000 for the tip. He's like, she's like, you write down $1,000 for the tip because I'm keeping this shit. <laughs> yep. It's the best. Uh yeah, so we'll move on from the wrestling and, and get into uh, one of our uh, regular segments. We missed you last week there, Professor. It's time to man up and bring it back. Let's go. We And little did you know, we had Scotty on last week, and he did the lead into it. Well, he you know, I, I was I was intending on taking a two-week hiatus, and it went so poorly last week that I was brought back in. I, yeah, I was whipped back home. I, <laughs> You, you, you had to call you cut the quote on your video. <laughs> <laughs> so right. away. This week's uh Tom Shitty Picks is brought to you by Brock Street Brewing Company, located at 244 Brock Street South in Whitby, Ontario. The brewery is home to a banquet hall, an on-site restaurant, and a members-only lounge. Everything they brew is done in-house, including their sours, their lagers, and their vodka sodas. They've got something for everyone. So if you're in the Whitby area, check them out and tell them the 73 podcast sent you. All right. This week, I'm going to give you two picks because I wasn't here last week. But uh, I'm going to go with uh, a pitcher and a hitter. My pitcher, I'm going to go with Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He's uh, got two starts this week, one against the Marlins and one against the uh, the San Francisco Giants. I think he's going to. He's been pitching pretty well. I think he's going to lights out against those guys. Neither team is uh, hit a bunch of hitters. So going to go with Yoshinobu. And for my hitter, I'm going to go with Jordan Alvarez from the Astros. 
He's uh, starting to heat up a little bit with the power. He's got eight home runs. He's got a full week of games, seven games this week, four against Oakland against their uh, pitiful uh, pitching staff and three against Milwaukee. And he's going to miss Milwaukee's best pitcher. So I think he's going to hit a, at least two or three dingers this week. So back to you, AC. So uh, let's, let's get into it. We're segueing into it. We know, we know people on uh, hiding this week from the podcast. The man that has the the Leafs and the Bruins logo in back of him, he's mysteriously not here to take a little little jab. Well, who do we start with? Do we, Ed? Why don't, why don't you why don't you kick off the next round of the NHL playoffs? But before we do that, Thomas, who is in the lead with picks? I believe, well, you, are. <laughs> I believe you are. Might not be an NFL guy. Definitely an <laughs> NHL guy. We're all close. They're all, we're within. I think we've all got the same amount of losses, but you've picked more of the exact uh, games. So good, good. I like that. I like so that. Far. It's, about, it's about time the worm turns a little bit. Attention uh, to detail. <laughs> I, I for detail. Ed, that's so what series do you want to start with first? I'll let you <sighs> pick, Ed. Let's start with. Let's just start with the one that's at home first. Yeah, let's let's that let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. What's my home and your home? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and yeah, yeah. So, well, well, let's finish off that Bruins Toronto series. We didn't talk about that. It, it ended. Let Let's get over that hump. Let's talk about what a mess Toronto is. Thoughts, Ryan, on on the Maple Leafs at the end of that series and how it's how it's gone. Well, it's. It's uh, if I I think like what's up with Shanny? Like Shanny's like he's the puppet master. They've gone through plenty of coaches. They, they I mean, they got the same core four, but they, they put a lot of pieces in there. They, it's not like they're just sitting on their hands. They've made moves. Coaches are gone. Like he's got to be next. Like they, they something big has got to happen there. It's a, it's. A, I don't know if it, I'm. I'm assuming it's going to be Miner. Miner's probably going to be the one to go. But like, can you swap Miner for uh, a number, one, like a true number one defenseman? I don't know. I, I think that's kind of what they need. The goaltending. I mean, I don't really think it was like really a goaltending issue. But you know, you got a a Shesterkin back there. Like what the Rangers got going on right now, it's, it could make all the difference in the world. It's. Uh, I, I think. I think Tavares got to go. He's, he's, I mean, he's overpaid. He's at the end of his deal. So it's like, you can't really expect him to be putting up the numbers that he put up when he first signed. But uh, I'm, 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 I'm keeping Matthews. I'm keeping Willie, even though it was kind of like when they weren't playing. Now you start, the thing that sucks is like, they're, they're in that mecca of hockey with the big media and you got those guys not playing and they can't tell the fans like why they're out. They always got that upper body thing and all that, but they're like making their own plays look like shit because now people are like, Willie's not playing because he's got a headache. Like, don't be just throwing out like, oh, he's not, we think he's got like migraines. Like, then they're showing him, they're showing him at practice buzzing around and he's like, you know, he's smiling and all that. And I mean, you got migraines, it doesn't mean you can't crack, crack a smile for the day, but it's just a bad look on the team. Like, it's, it's like making them look like they lack toughness or like where everybody else is playing through stuff. I think the wall thing was pretty unique too because he came in yeah. and yeah. and he had a really good, you know, those two games he he bailed them out. Yeah. He was looking good. And it, it, the thing about him is you can always tell, like he was in there with no pressure whatsoever. He was making saves, and when he was talking to the referees, he seemed like he was always smiling, having the yeah. actually having his life. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, whatever happened in between that game six and game seven where he supposedly I don't know what happened to him, got hurt, got sick, whatever. And then I guess they, they said it was, his, it was his back. So he hurt his back. But it's like, go. did he there stiffen up after the game? He, he played the whole game. <laughs> Drink some water. Stay off the Ozempic, for Christ's yeah. sakes. <laughs> Look at that. So, uh, Tom, thoughts on the end of that series? Because that's the one that everybody was talking about. After it was done, nobody was talking about any of the other fallouts from any of the other series. They were talking about the Islanders, talking about the Caps. That was the only series that seemed to get the most press of the team that was eliminated. What thoughts on that? Because 
we they know are the, Toronto. They are the Boston, the Boston Red Sox of the hockey. They just can't. They're in their own heads now. They can't beat the Red Sox. Couldn't beat the Yankees. They can't beat the Bruins right now. And I mean, eventually it's going to happen. But before that happens, I think I think I totally agree with Branco. They have to get rid of Shanahan. He's just you can't. You've gotten rid of how many coaches now? You you let Hyman go. Look at him. What did he have? Fifty something goals this year. He's got like six or seven goals in the playoffs. So I mean, he could have been a guy that would have helped them this year. It's just. They've they've got to get a coach that can and, and the rumor is is Barubi yeah may yeah. get the job so I mean I think he'll help he'll toughen them up but they've got to mentally right now they're just shot they just well, had all the confidence in the world until they as soon as they seem like even just right off the start in game one as soon as they got down you could see it they're like gripping the the sticks a little bit harder no the passes were going in each other's feet nothing was clean. Yeah, uh, don't forget last year uh, when they got eliminated, they fired the GM, remember? He was the yeah. scapegoat last year. Yeah. So it always seems like if there is a problem with the players, they're always the last ones to be addressed. It's always the front office that, that takes the hit, or this year, Sheldon Keefe, the coach. Um, I don't know. It, it seems uh, it seems that there's more stuff going on with that team than what they're actually uh have on the surface and maybe the media knows certain things and they just can't you know kind of let it out but i don't know ed thoughts on i think that? just being under that me that media uh scrutiny too it's everything everything is times 100 you know what i mean yeah so well and, no i mean the thing about it is that team is built for the regular season that team is not built for the playoffs bottom line is i said think about this just look think about this stat Average hits during an NHL game during the 82-game season, 41 hits a game, right? The average hits now that are going on in the playoffs, 82. Yeah. So yeah, think about I... that. So the thing about it is just that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the, 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 the defenses are, during the regular season are played are differently. There's more space out on the ice, everything like that. Now, all of a sudden, you get to the playoffs, you get to the tournament, right? All of a sudden, these coaches, they switch defenses now. You know, they're playing – everybody's playing that neutral zone trap that the Devils used to play back in the day, that they all play it. That, that's how they win. So the thing about it is, is that – so, of course, that the, the, you know, the offensive guys that are used to having space, they're not going to have space anymore. And that's exactly what happened to that team. They're, hey. they're used to playing with space. They're not used to playing with body on body. Hey, don't, don't forget, too. Swayman was playing or was playing that out of his ass. Nine, 95, nine, 95 save percentage. So and that, and that thing went seven games. He he just plays he just plays normal. Leaves win. There's not even a conversation. And now the conversation's like, oh, the team's got him playing right. So it's uh, it's such a result driven uh, opinions. Maybe they don't really even need that much. It's just it's just sometimes a little bit of luck comes into it. You gotta you run into a hot goalie. Is what it is. You're out. Well, I mean, look at back in the day with Patrick Roy. I mean, he was a hot goalie as a rookie, right? Yes. Yeah. He didn't even know uh, the thing about Roy that year that a lot of people forget or you don't even know that he didn't play a regular season game that, that year that they brought him up right before the playoff run and he just rolled. And then the next year he was officially a rookie. So that that was his, you know, his entry level NHL run was was the playoffs so um ed being in florida thoughts on the the way the bruins panthers series is going right now here's your chance man i think it's going exactly the way that we all talked about how it was gonna go i mean the thing about it is is that uh you know the uh florida is hungry and they want to win and uh in my opinion they are just really outplaying the bruins they're out hitting them they're out hustling them, um, you know, especially with uh, with two games that they've had. And, um, you know, one thing I will say um, with, you know, with Pasta is to get out there and, and throw down. Man, that, that took a lot. And also with him, uh, he's one of the few guys in the NHL that his stats really don't go down very much in the playoffs. He doesn't take that much of a downtick. The only other person that pretty much as good as him is Connor McDavid. Uh, 
Thomas, I got to get your thoughts on Bruins Nation, and here's your chance to weigh in. Uh, what do you what do you see that is working against the Bruins? Is Florida really the better team, or do you think I, Boston? I think they are a better team overall. I think the uh, the big difference right now that I see is in their head coach is can make. Uh, doesn't seem like Montgomery can make the in-game changes uh, or that need to be need to happen during the game. I mean, you see, I love Maurice as a coach. I've always liked him, and you could see he's just always. I mean, he they're both over even keel, but he makes the the changes that need to be made, and you could see it just between the first and the second game that they started putting somebody in front of Swayman because he's so he's playing so out of his mind that you have to the way you're going to beat him to start off with anyway is to uh, get a few tippins and the Bruins just aren't clearing out the front of the net right now. And I, they're just a better team. But having said that the Bruins have played like crap the last game and probably a half and uh, they're, they're only down one game. So this game, next game's key, but if Marshan's out with a, a concussion, I mean, that's going to be a big loss for them, but. Yeah. From Bennett too. Bennett came back and gave him it. it yeah. It's like uh he he started coming and it wasn't happening. I mean, yeah. it, if you if you watch that video, he like sneaky uppercutted him with the right yeah. hand on the back side. Mm -hmm. So he, he might even like they were saying like it was a show. He might like just like half knocked him out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The 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 guy that I love on the Panthers and I loved him last year and he is such a playoff guy is Monador. I mean, he is going to be a free agent on July 1st. And, man, if what a value that guy brings. He's not ever mentioned in that top echelon of the, you know, Kachuk and now, of course, Reinhardt this year and, uh, you know, even Ekblad and Bob and all those guys. But, man, it, it, if I could steal one guy off that team for, for defense, it'd be him. I still think he's probably, for me, watching he is one of the best defense and he had a rocket in that last game that that uh you know i don't know if swayman was screened or not but that thing was moving um and then you know you're waiting for other guys to heat up too i mean uh ryan Hott hasn't really done much bennett just came back uh they they're not plagued with injuries at all um do you think the Bruins are playing banged up, Tom? Do you think there's a lot of things going on? or I think you... everybody's playing banged up at this point. Um, but, I mean, I can't use that as an excuse. But um, I think the, the unsung hero for Florida is their defenseman, Gustav Forsland. I mean, he was like a plus 56 on the season. He's like a plus six, I think, during the uh, playoffs. And they basically put him out there just shadowing pa Pasternak, and he's done a good job with Pasta so far. I mean, I think to me, he's he's been the unsung hero. But the Bruins are playing Florida. Coming into the playoffs, when we did our predictions, I said Florida had to stay out of the penalty box. The series they have, I mean, they and the Bruins have been in the penalty box. I think Florida's got five uh, power play goals already, so the Bruins have to stay out of the penalty box. Let's uh, shift gears and talk Rangers. What a what a juggernaut! Seven and zero to start the playoffs. Uh, as we're talking right now on Saturday, they're they're playing chance to eliminate. Uh, there's only been a handful of teams that have started off the playoffs seven and zero, um, and it, it's all usual suspects when you go back and look at at the teams. And most of those teams that started off seven and zero ended up winning the Stanley Cup. So, a uh, little stat there, uh, just. Well, you know, I'm a Peter Laviolette guy, always really good playoff driven teams. Uh, you know, he's gone to the playoffs and been successful with multiple different teams. And uh, I always thought that he knows another good guy like Paul Maurice knows how to manage players in the playoffs. I mean, it's almost like he lets them play during the regular season and then he sinks in and really dives into manipulating that chemistry during the playoffs thoughts on the Rangers, Ryan. Yeah, it's, uh, then, I mean, they're on a heater, but I, uh, if you, if you've been watching the games, it's like Carolina's like outplaying them. It's just It's like unbelievable right now. He is. Uh, and it's like, you look at Carol, say Carol, Carolina. They, I think they had at one point, uh, if not worse now with today's game, I haven't really caught up on that, but, uh, they were like 0 for 15 on the power play. They had the second best power play in the league this year. 
So that that's like your special teams, your your secondary scoring is huge come playoff time, and they're carrying the play. I mean, a lot, I feel like a lot of their shots is like coming from like the perimeter, so they're they're not really like bringing it like into the house. But they're they I mean, to be down 0-3, three, it's kind of unbelievable. They 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 don't deserve that. They they're too good for it. I think they just lack that. Aho's really good. They don't have that superstar. Like it, it's like he's like a A two kind of a star, but they don't have that big name guy. They don't have the Panarins. They don't have the the guys that the Rangers have. Rangers is just unbelievable. They're just like, is there a, like more fun team to watch? I mean, you might. I know you're not a big Rangers guy, but they're a good time. If you, if you, if you want to watch a game, watch a Rangers game, man. They they get a little bit of everything. Ed, thoughts on that Rangers team this year? Well, I mean, they, they seem like they they get out there, they skate, they're physical, they move the puck really well. And, um, you know, I, I, I agree with Ryan. I mean, I've been watching a lot of that series, and it just seems to me that, you know, Carolina really is playing really well. It just seems like the, the Rangers pretty much just – it the puck just seems to find the back of the net. And with Carolina, it doesn't. Thomas, I'm going to ask you a question. Yo. If Carolina gets eliminated – does Rod Brindmore get fired? I don't think so. I don't I don't think not this year, but they've got to make a change in that. They've got to pick up a goalie. That's been their weakness the last few seasons. Freddie Anderson's given up eight goals and going into this game on uh, 62 shots. I mean, that's like an 850 uh save percentage. They went back to him in tonight's game. Right now they're winning. Uh Carolina's winning three to two, but it's just the Rangers are a Friggin' train right now. I mean, they've they've got so much balance right now in this just in this series alone with their scoring and like like I said going into the playoffs, Shesterkin they gave him just enough rust. With Quick was playing great during the season where Shesterkin didn't have to play as much, so he's well rusted and he's hitting his prime his stride right now at the perfect time. So if uh, if you're coaching the Bruins, you ride Swain until the end. Yep. They wouldn't have won that Toronto series if it wasn't for Swayman. So I, to me, yeah. And to be honest with you, Swayman, I think during the off season he'll probably end up trading now, Mark, to try to help out the team in another way. But you can't have that much money either guy because Swayman's going to get paid. So either guy, you're going to have too much money sitting on somebody sitting on the bench, and it's too much money. And they're so far so tight up against the salary cap, they have to make it. That's the only way they're going to add anyone. Uh, let's talk West Coast. Let's let's go uh, Western Conference. Let's talk. Uh, I I was able to watch the Dallas uh, Vegas Game Seven. Those fans were rocking in that. Uh, that's the most I've seen the Dallas fans engaged in a game. And uh, you know they eliminate Vegas. Um, I know Vegas came in as a low seed, but um, you know. Brad predicted that the Dallas Stars are going to win the uh, Stanley Cup, so we'll 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 keep an we'll keep an eye on that one. But uh, that's that's a bold uh, prediction from a hockey guy. So, so we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But thoughts on uh, you know the the McDavid saga where uh, the first game he didn't get any shots on that at all. I mean Edmonton's kind of under that Toronto microscope a little bit too. Um, what do you think, Tom, about the the way the West Coast is playing out? It's a common theme for me. It's goaltending. I mean, Vancouver, they're winning right now with their third string guy. If Demko comes back, I didn't think they'd go far in the playoffs. But if Demko comes back, I mean, they're gonna have all the confidence in the world. And Edmonton, it's all it's all I mean, they they, they can score three or four goals a game. It's just a matter of whether or not Skinner is gonna stop enough pucks for them to win. Yeah, I still think uh, Colorado's uh, heavy. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's tough. I mean, that's wh- whoever it is. I still think the Rangers are going to win the whole thing out of out of everybody. I still think that if if Florida ends up playing the Rangers, that's going to be a very fun series to watch. And it's going to be you know maybe Trubo will get a piece of somebody and maybe it'll cause a melee. Who knows? Shesterkin versus Bob. That'd be pretty cool too. So uh, Ryan thoughts on the Western conference. Yeah. I, uh, where's Ottinger? I had that, that. I thought he was going to be the difference maker for Dallas. And it's like, all right, they snuck by first round, but like 
Yeah, I don't like you don't expect that from some of these these secondary goalies, but he's he's like the only big name guy. And I'm like he is he's he's been playing rough and as far as I'm concerned. They are they put they've got a pretty balanced team as well. So you, you kind of figure that they they can go with anybody. But if they don't have him, then they're, they're done. Yeah. I agree with you hundred percent on that. I mean he's he's a big part of a major part of their success. And Ed, what do you what do you think of Want to weigh in on the uh, Western Conference? Yeah, I'm, my biggest thing is just that with, uh, you know, with Edmonton series, I mean, they've been rolling that first line over, over and over and over and over again. I mean, those guys are, what, getting close to, you know, skating probably about 30 minutes a game. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, you deep you go in the playoffs and that type of thing, that gets that gets a little bit tough. Um, you know, I mean, I did pick Dallas versus the Ra- Dallas versus the Rangers for the Stanley Cup final. Um, Colorado is still the machine, man. They 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 skate, they and they just play hard. So, um, I think that series is is going to be a really exciting series. And you know, the only problem is is that those games run so damn late. Yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. don't forget, Leon Leon uh, Dreisaitl was hurt too. He's he's kind of uh, he he he's on himself right now. He's he's dragging his ass out there. Yeah. Um, so tomorrow night, uh, Bruins, one more game at home. Uh, Thomas, I'm going to just ask you this one question. Are they tying it up or are they going down? I think they, I, I didn't think they were going to be Toronto. So I'm going to say they're going to go down. <laughs> I lost my card carrying membership of, for Bruins nation with that uh, pick. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying to draw ratings. Maybe Chris will troll <laughs> on the, uh, comments and, and hit you up like, well, I can't believe you said that. So is there is there any truth to the rumor that uh, Chris is out uh, shopping for shavers right now and next week it's coming off? <laughs> <laughs> Lady Bix for everybody. Woo! <laughs> Clean it up, kid. Clean it up. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, right now. I'm gonna um, we'll we'll move on from the hockey. I'm I'm gonna probably drop in the tinfoil hat somewhere like around here. Tom will have to put on his, there it is, tinfoil hat. Um, so we're going to wind this uh, episode down until the <laughs> aluminum can hat. <laughs> uh, Tom, you want to uh, talk about our friends at Purchase Street? This week's album of the week is brought to you by Purchase Street Records, which is located at 53 Popes Island, Unit 2, New Bedford, Mass. You can also visit them online at purchasestrecords.com or on their Facebook page. Purchase Street Records is Southern New England's largest independent record store. So it's time to uh, do what we do. End of the episode. It's time for some shout outs. I'm going to start off. I'm going to wish the professor a very happy birthday this week. Uh, Birthday was yesterday. We got to recognize, all better recognize uh, the big, yep, throw it up there. Up to get old. That's what we do. It's all, that's all we got. Um, just, Half this room is just a little younger. <laughs> and I would say something else, but I don't want to get canceled. <laughs> and a little bit longer. <laughs> Rolodex of comedy is going in the head, but I cannot say what I, what I want to say. But uh, yeah, I just watching. Everybody's watching. Don't. Don't let the views fool you. I, I see the analytics. There's a lot of people that watch, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, always count on the views. A lot of uh, trolling, a lot, of, a lot of a lot of mystery behind the scenes with a lot of these people watching. I know we we know who you are. I I, I see. Uh, if you don't like me, fuck you. Still click like. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a thumb up and a thumb in. <laughs> So yeah, I just want to say uh, from from your voice, this this is your crew. Happy birthday, Thomas! Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, Ed, what do you got? I got two things, Thomas, for the third time. Happy birthday, <laughs> brother! <laughs> Happy birthday, five one, huh? Fifty one trips around the old sun. You know, and you don't want to say uh, hello to all the guys down at work. No, no, I'm not going to do that. He hasn't met him all yet. Thing. I do have one other thing. One of my former athletes today, uh, I only coached her for a very short amount of time, but she was the first female to ever – To she was the first female to cross 
um, the 70.3 Gulf Coast today in four hours and 27 minutes. So uh, really proud of Samantha. Bill. Professor, what do you got on the birthday weekend? Well, I got two things. First, I want to send uh, my condolences to a friend of Kelly and mine, uh, a former teacher, a friend of Kelly's. He lives in Oklahoma now. Uh, Mark Bell, his mom passed away two days ago. So uh, thinking about you, Mark. And second, I want to thank everyone for all the uh, birthday wishes. And for the people who didn't send me anything, fuck you. Very good. I yeah. love it. It's all part of the long storytelling heel turn, like the, like the bloodline. Get off my lawn, huh, Tom? Yes. So we're going we're gonna to close this episode with the Phantom. You have the floor. Ooh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'll start about uh, my son, uh, Dylan, big fan of the pod. He, uh, he just finished uh, finals week, sophomore year of college. So he's, he's grinding, got through it. And he's going to enjoy his summer and be back for junior year. Some more years to go, kid. Doing a great, great job. Proud of you. So how much more positivity can we end with? So we're going to end on that note. From my family to your family, to everybody's family, we'll see you next time for episode 66. See ya. Later.